Hi everyone, it's been a while since I last recorded a video on Groundhog. Um, I've prepared a couple of articles which were well received, but some functionality is just best explained by providing a live demo. And that's exactly what I want to do today. I want to show you a little bit about the possibility of adding interactivity to Python and to Groundhog um, using the automation routines with G input from matplotlib. So in this notebook, I will show you how to actually get input from a graph by clicking on it. And this has applications in geotechnical engineering because when we try to automate things, we often hit the barrier of our data. And if our data is noisy or if it contains uh, outliers or some other errors, then sometimes you will need to use your engineering judgment and fully automated routines will not work. So here I'll present some semi-automated routines which can help you to better process laboratory testing or field testing data. So the first thing I need to show to you is how you actually can get user input from graphs in Python. And that is done with the G input functionality in matplotlib. So if you want to follow this notebook along, you can always navigate to articles, Groundhog Interactivity, and then open this notebook, which I currently have open. This will be in the dev branch of Groundhog. If you want to get input from the user, you will need to use the G input functionality in matplotlib. And the first step for that is to import matplotlib. Matplotlib is a plotting backend for Python and it is quite popular for scientific publications. So we can import pyplot uh, from matplotlib, like so. So now we have the library imported. And in order for the interactivity to work, we need to execute the matplotlib magic command. This will ensure that any graphs created with matplotlib open up in a separate window. We can create a very simple matplotlib plot, so I'll just say pyplot, and then I will provide the x, sorry, I'm on a Mac here, the x and y coordinates of two points, so the points 0, 0 and 10, 10. And I will say that my chart's X label needs to be X. The Y label of the chart needs to be Y. It's all pretty standard syntax. And then I can show the plot. So now if we execute this cell with shift enter or with the play button, you will see that you actually get a chart with a nice straight line from 0, 0 to 10, 10. We'll leave that window open for now um, and we'll use G input on that window to get interactive input from the user. So what is G input all about? Well, to check the documentation of a function, you can always from within the notebook type the function name, so that's plt.gimput in this case, and execute that cell. And when you then inspect the documentation string, you will see that gimput takes an argument n, which is the number of clicks to accumulate, the timeout, so the number of seconds that the routine is waiting for input, and then a couple of additional commands for adding, removing, and stopping selection. So this means that here we can just execute um, a function that will provide us with the um, with two points. So in order to do that, we just say x y. So x y will be our output. X equal to plt dot g input and then two. So with that, we'll select two points in the chart. So if we execute that, we go back to our chart and then we select the first point and the second point. So I've clicked on either side. If the selection is finished, our red cross has disappeared and we actually get a completed cell here. 
So now, um, if we say, uh, if we want to inspect what's inside XY, we will see that it's an array of XY coordinates. So we selected two points. This is the first point, X and Y, the second point, X and Y. And if we want to zoom in further on coordinates, we can just use the normal Python indexing syntax. So the coordinates of the first point are um, X, Y, 0. So that's 2.56, 5.82. Two. And the x coordinate of the second point, if you want that, you can do x, y, and then one because Python is zero indexed for the second point. And the x coordinate is the first one, so zero index. And that's the x coordinate of our second point, as you can see here. So now we can close the plotting window. We've done all of our interactivity on that chart to demonstrate G input, and we can go to some more advanced applications. So Groundhog makes use of this G input internally. Groundhog is open source, so if you want to check how that works, you can go to the source code in any case. Um, but by, uh, Groundhog wraps the complexity of that functionality in easy to use functions. And here I'll demonstrate that based on consolidation data using the root time and the log time method. So if you look at the root time method, in the root time method, you will plot the displacement readings against the square root of time. You will then draw a best fit line between the origin and uh, straight. You will put a straight line through the origin and the initial straight part of the curve that gives you OA. And then you will take 15% uh, higher uh, square root time to identify the point B. And where this line OB intersects with the data, you find the point C. And at C, you find T90, and then you have this formula to derive the coefficient of consolidation CV from T90 and the drainage length. So um, this construction, I mean, it's a multi-step construction. It can look quite complex. This is maybe something that we would typically do uh, with a ruler uh, to, to get this on paper. And uh, getting that in on the computer is maybe not the easiest task. But we can uh, use Groundhog to actually automate that process. And the first thing we'll do is to import some consolidation data. So if you look in the data directory, I have my odometer data.csv, and I'll import it with pandas. So I type import pandas as pd, and then I will type that consolidation data That, that equals uh, pandas.readcsv. And then I provide the path to my file with consolidation data, which is odometerdata.csv. And if I want to inspect the first couple of rows, I just say consolidation data.head and it will print the first five rows. So here we have it. Uh, we have uh, five rows with the time in seconds increasing from zero going upward and then the settlement uh, increasing from zero but becoming increasingly negative so negative means more compression we can plot that uh, plotly is still available most of groundhog uses plotly so we'll do that as well so i'll just type uh, my consolidation data and then the time uh, the load step time that is the x coordinate of my plotly trace, my consolidation data set load step settlement. That will be the Y data. Uh, since we only have one trace, we won't show the legend, but we will plot it as lines, not as markers, and give it a name uh, called that load step. Um, so we need to append this trace to our chart. So we append the trace data to the chart and our chart here, I've included some boilerplate code, has one row and one column, so only one subplot. So that's also where our trace needs to end up. And if we want to have a layout on the x-axis, we can just say the x-axis title is time in seconds. So here we plot absolute time. And the y-axis is going to be settlement in millimeters. So always useful to include inputs. And there we go. Now we have a chart of our settlement data. 
So it all looks quite clean. There's not a lot of noise. This is quite nicely behaved data. In reality, things might well be different. Um, we could just use pl uh, Plotly to plot against the square root of time as well and then prepare the construction. But actually, Groundhog makes things easier for us. Because in Groundhog, you have a function called root time method. So we will include that. So from Groundhog. Dot site investigation dot lab testing dot compressibility. We can import the function root time method. So that's our root time method function. We can import it. And then using the question mark, we can expect the we can inspect the documentation. So if we do that, we can look at the function signature, and the function signature says that this um, calculates the root time construction for an odometer test. And you, the procedure which was explained above is again explained in the docu documentation string. Um, but it's interesting to look at the input parameters. So what do I need? I need my times an array with time values in seconds increasing from zero the settlements an array with settlement values increasing from zero at the origin so make uh, take note that this is increasing um, and then also a drainage length so the drainage length for the consolidation is required and for an odometer test with top and bottom drainage that is half of the sample height so um, this is also included in the Groundhog documentation on read the docs. And if we want to execute that function, we can simply fill in the function signature. So I will just copy here this function signature. Put it here and call that um, root time underscore result. So the resulting uh, the result of this will be of this function root time method will be uh, put in here. And since we're also expecting the inputs as arrays, I will convert my pandas data frame columns to arrays. So I'm do that. I'm going to do that. So I say numpy array and then consolidation data. Consolidation data and then load step time in seconds that is increasing from zero so that's fine and then the settlements these are equal to numpy array consolidation data um, load step settlement in millimeters but this load step settlement is still um, in increasing becoming increasingly negative so i've converted to positive by putting a minus in front of it effectively converting the sign and then uh, my drainage length, I have a, a sample height of 18 millimeters. And if I look at the units of drainage length, that's in meters. So always be careful to look at the units. They are specified in the groundhog documentation. And I'm going to put uh, 0.09 millimeters in as the, uh, um, as the drainage length. So 9 millimeters, 0 0.009 meters. If I execute this function, the, um, you will see that the root time construction is created. And if I go back to the notebook, you will get instructions. So select the position of the origin and then select a point on the initial straight portion. So now my function is waiting for input and I can select that origin point and the point on the initial straight portion. And there we go, we have our root time construction immediately before us with the intersection at T90. So now um, our root time result that contains the, um, the necessary outputs. So if I print that to screen, you can see, OK, so I've got my T90, which is 327 uh, seconds approximately, and my CV. Um, so if I want to print that CV, I can always say, the coefficient of consolidation with the root time method is, and then this is string completion, so we'll take a floating point number with three decimals. Uh, so after the percentage time, I then simply fill in root time result, and then open square brackets CV uh, meter square per year. And that's what 
my procedure is expecting. So 6.6 uh, .6 meters square per year. You can also save uh, the figure with the construction. So you see we've got a plot here in the output dictionary. So if I type root time result and then plot in square brackets, that uh, takes me to the plot. And with matplotlib, you can save the figure using the save fig method. I have a folder called images and I'm going to call this uh, cv uh, root time dot png. And if I execute that, you will see that in the images folder, a CV root time appears, and that's exactly my construction. We can close um, the window with the plot and go to the next step, which is the log time method. So the log time method, again, a procedure to derive CV from measurements, now by plotting time on a log scale. And the procedure, uh, well, you need to select points on the straight portion, points on the secondary compression line, where it find where they intersect, and then select a point B close to the head of the curve. So it can get quite complex to do all of that yourself. If you find T50, so that comes from point D, point A, and then halfway in between, that T50 leads you to CV and uh, CV is therefore then calculated with another method than the uh, root time method. So again, fairly complex, but Groundhog uh, does most of that work for you. So again, we can import the log time method. So we go from Groundhog, site investigation, lab testing, compressibility, import log time method. So now we have the function. And if you would look at the documentation, you would see that it accepts the same arguments as our root time method. So we can um, take most of this syntax from the root time method, copy it, and then call this log time result, where we will not execute root time method, but log time method. Um, and then we will make the construction by first selecting two points on the primary consolidation part, then two points on the secondary consolidation part, and also uh, the point B close to the head of the curve. Again, need, we need the drainage length to then come up with CV. So if we execute the cell, first of all, we see a plot appearing of our log time construction. And then here we have our steps. So first select two points on the primary compression part, so we do that, seems a bit uh, extended here. Then select two points on the straight portion of the secondary consolidation part. That is more pronounced in this case. And then finally select the point B close to the head of the curve. So I'm going to do that here, select it there. And then Groundhog does everything else. It creates the log time construction. And you can see where we find T100 and then just off the chart, we have our first point, but that yields T50 um, where it intersects with the data. So now we can again inspect that result. So we go for log time result and we see that now, okay, we have another CV in there, RT50, RT100, the coordinates of the points and a plot. So we can now again plot, uh, print the coefficient of consolidation. So that will be log time result and then CV in meter square uh, per year. So let's print that. And we can see that the CV obtained with the log time method is a bit lower than the CV obtained with the root time method. So that is because if we've used two methods, the results are never going to be exactly the same but they also should not differ by an order of magnitude. Again, we can save the plot, so we can go for log time result and then plot, call the save fig method and save that to images cv log time png. And I had actually already executed this notebook once while testing, uh, but here is our um, here is our construction, um, which can now be put in a report or something like that. 
So that's it. Um, two examples of how Groundhog uses the interactive G input from Matplotlib to give us constructions which would otherwise take a very long time to complete. In the next post, I will talk about